In this video, I'll show you how to get up and running with Unity's tilemap system. I'll get you across some of the caveats newbies often fall into. Then I'll show you the power of working with a rule-based tile set to create your game worlds. Okay, so to get started with tile maps in Unity, let's just ensure you have got your 2D tile map editor installed in the package manager, which you can get to with Windows package manager. Once that's done, the first thing you will want to do is right click in your hierarchy, 2D object, tile map, and let's just start with a rectangular tile map. So this will create two objects, the parent, which is the grid. Uh, this is where you can control your cell size. You can add cell gaps to it. And the good thing about this uh, and how tile map keeps it nice and easy is say that this cell here is your uh, 000, 000 tile map, right? Now tile maps use by default vector three int as opposed to vector three. So if this is zero, 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 this one here will always be one, zero, zero. Even if you've got this cell gap here and it's elongated, right? These are always going to match the vector three int uh, coordinates, okay? So having, having uh, ob obscure cell sizes and gaps does not change the maths in your scripts at all. It, it keeps it nice and easy. And the swizzle here is just the orientation. So this is default, uh, Unity default. So obviously horizontally will be the X and, and the uh, vertical on the screen will be the Y. On the actual time map object itself, I will go through this stuff uh, a bit shortly because we will touch on all this. Um, but to begin painting on your tile map, if you've got your tile map selected and you don't have your palette open already, you'll have this little dialog here. So you can just click this. And then let's just dock this down here like that. Okay, so now this is your tile palette. To begin actually painting, you'll need to create a new palette instance. So click this, create new palette. Let's just call this the uh, rectangle palette. Okay, and then uh, grid will be rectangle. Um, we'll keep all the defaults here and then just click create. I'm going to put it in my tile map folder and I'll create a palettes, palettes folder right there. So now we've got our palettes right here. Now, now that we've got our palette, we need a uh, some sprites or some tiles to put to put in this to start painting. So uh, to keep it simple, if you just create a two D sprite square, okay, you can actually click this button here, the sprite in the sprite renderer, to grab the official Unity square that they use. And I'm just going to drag this straight up into my project to copy it. So now that I've got this sprite, I can just drag this directly into my palette and let's create a tiles folder and I'll call that square. And now you just need to click it and you can start painting just directly onto the, onto the scene view right there. Okay. Okay. So there's a few things that we can uh, look into now. So if you click on your tile map over here, you can see the, the anchor. Now, if I create just a cube, and I center it to zero, you'll notice the cube is not, like it's it's not in the, the boxes of the tile map. It's So the center of the cube is zero, zero, zero. Maybe you want your tile map to also have the cells on the actual pivots of those uh, vector three positions. So what you can do is you can click your tile map and this tile anchor here, you can change it to zero, zero. And now your tile grid will if, if you tell an object to go to, you know, vector three, uh, one, 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 you know, it will definitely go straight to here. Okay. Uh, it won't go to the, the, the middle kind of, um, grid point. So that's one thing you can do. Uh, another thing is on your, this is the tile that we made. So this is this, this is the, uh, instance of this tile here. And, uh, this is just a basic tile. Um, which derives from the base tile class. And basically it's just given you a few additional things here. So we can just directly change the color. Okay, not too exciting. And then we can also add colliders to it. So right now it's Sprite Collider. And if you'll see, I will just create a Sprite here and let's make it a circle and move it up here. Let's give it a rigid body 2D. A circle collider 2D, and if we press play, it won't actually do anything. And let me just speed up my project startup. As you'll see, it doesn't do anything. That's because 
even though that we have declared that we want uh, a collider on this uh, sprite here, we haven't said on the tile map that we uh, are expecting it. So if we just search tile map, you can say tile map collider 2D. And now as you can see, each sprite has the, the individual um, collider there. Okay. So I'm going to swap over to now a hexagon uh, tile group because hexagon tile group has uh, significantly more caveats. And basically, if you know how to do a hexagon tile map, you can easily just convert everything into uh, your knowledge into a, a square, a rectangle um, map. All right, so let's create a hexagon tile map. Um, flat top hexagon. And now that we've got that, we need a new tile palette to fit the hexagon map. So let's call this a hexagon palette and it will be a hexagon and a flat top. The rest will be default creates. Let's put that in our palettes. All right, now we need a brush. So I'm gonna do it the same as what I did with this rectangle, 2D object, sprite, hexagon flat top. I'm gonna click it and find the source, pull it into my project. Let's call it hexagon, delete it from the scene, and then just simply drag it into my palettes here. Call this, oops, just hexagon. And now you can grab it and start painting as a hexagon tile map. Okay, so this is all well and good, uh, but what if you would like a bit of depth to these tiles? So for example, what if on these bottom tiles here, you would like to actually show that they've got kind of like an underblock here to give it more of a 3D look and that you're looking at it on more of an angle as opposed to directly down uh, on top. So I'll show you how to do that. Uh, in your photo editor of choice, I use Photoshop. Uh, the, the rule that you have to maintain is that the tile always needs to be in, like, so the pivot of the tile, the center of the tile needs to be in the direct center of the, uh, of the canvas. So uh, for example, this is 512 wide. It doesn't actually matter how high uh, how tall your, your canvas is. So I like to give myself a lot of room here. So for example, if I wanted to have um, some vines hanging down here, I could have that. If I wanted like a large tower on top here, I could also do that and it wouldn't actually change the pivot of the tile. Uh, so I'll show you what I mean. So I've got these actually imported here. So I'm just going to use these directly on the uh, canvas here. And as you can see, I've got pixels per unit set to 512 because that is the width of my, of my canvas here. And I want that to be perfectly fitting into one world unit in Unity, okay? So make sure you set your pixels per unit correctly depending on your image. So I'm just gonna drag this now into here. And let's just call this, yep, grass, grass one hex is fine. So as you can see, it's actually sitting on the, uh, on the grid. And then my under block is under, it's, it's overhanging basically. So now you've got the brush, you can now just paint it on. Okay. And you'll see that it, it overhangs from the actual cell. But what you'll notice quickly is when you start painting, the ordering, the layer, the layer sorting is absolutely off. So this is the first caveat and I'll show you how to fix this now. So it's a two-step process. Go to edits, project settings, and then graphics. And you've got your camera settings here. So right now it's just using the default 001. What we wanna do is we wanna change this to custom axis. We wanna make it one on the Y and zero on the Z axis, okay? Then on your tile map, you want to change this to individual and that should fix your problem. So let's just add a few more hex tiles here of different colors. I've got grass two hex here. Got my stone hex here. And then you can easily just start, whoops, just painting on a little bit of color. And you can easily see that you can start getting a really nice looking tile map uh, relatively quickly. Okay, now the final thing I'm gonna show you is rule tiles. Now this is what makes the Unity tile system so powerful. And I'll show you what I mean. So to get started, you go to Windows Package Manager, and then you need to include enable preview packages. So click the cog gear right there, enable preview packages. 
and then let's search extra and this will be the two map 2d tile map extras so just install that all right so to create your first rule tile let's make a new subfolder here and just call this rule tiles and then unity provides an easy way so just go to create 2d tiles and with the 2d extras we've got all these new tiles here so let's just say rule tile okay call this our grass rule tile like that and let's put in our default one there now we don't need this one anymore and i'll just show you in in tile maps you can use these same tools to actually edit the palette just click edit button here click your eraser and just click that off and then finish editing and that will just remove it from your palette okay so let's start painting so we've got this tile here and let's just start with that so let's give this tile some rules to allow it to automatically put the correct sprites into the correct places okay so what do we need we need this top one will need to have walls here and this bottom one will need to have walls here and then they both need to have a, a freeway here okay so let's find that and three sides is what we need okay so go to our grass rule tile open it up let's add a new rule here and then let's just slot in our rule tile and now as you can see uh if we just open up that rule tile again, you'll see we need to block off this side, the bottom and this side, and we let need to let this one run through. So here we just say, no, no, no. And then this top one is free. Okay. So now you can see that because this is only pointing up, this one adheres to that rule, but this one doesn't, but we can reuse this rule by clicking this middle circle here to allow it to flip. Okay, so that will flip independently. There's a few more rules here that just allow it to flip X, flip Y, and then all directions. Okay, uh, let's just use this one for now. So let's just expand this a little bit. Let's paint on another one down here. Okay, so now this middle rule does not have a rule set here that it can adhere to. What this needs is the sides to be blocked and the two top, the top and the bottom to be free flowing. Okay, so let's find one that will adhere to that standard. There we go, two opposite sides. So let's add a new rule here. Add the two opposite sides. Let's say the sides are um, blocked and these are free flowing and there we go. But if you noticed, if I draw this way, this one will not uh, be able to follow this rule because we haven't flipped it. Okay, so now we can use this in both directions. Uh, this can get, uh, quite confusing and it takes quite a while to get all the rule sets to, to cover every single edge case. So I'll just do one more with you here. So what does this one need? This one needs a blocked side. It needs two free flowing sides here, one free flowing side here, and then it actually needs two little divots here on the side. Okay, so let's look for a tile that could possibly uh, handle that job. And there we go. That one, that one looks like it can handle the job, doesn't it? So one side and then two divots here. That's one side and two corners. Let's add a rule for that. One side and two corners. Okay. So looking at my little sprite here, I know that this side here is no go. This can be flown through. This can be flown through. And then right here, the little corners, we're going to say no and no. And then we'll allow it to flip. Hey there, Matt from the past. Um, I'm just gonna hold you there because I've got one more thing I need to show the boys. So I mentioned earlier that uh, the reason why we create our own game rule tile, and I'll show you why. So if you've just got a traditional square tile here, you'll see that we can paint this on here. And if we go to our square tile, we can actually, we've got this color thing here. We can just change the color. But what you'll notice is on our grass rule tile, we don't actually have that. Okay, we've just got, this is just the Unity's implementation of the rule tile, and they just gave us the base thing that they want to show us effectively. So what if we wanted to uh, add things to this too? Like I'll show you color and then you can just extrapolate from there and do your own thing. So let's go to our game rule tile sprat, uh, script and let's add a public color here. And then for this to actually apply to our tile, we need to override and let's scroll down here, get tile data. Now, 
unit is actually calling this to grab the information and actually serve it to the screen. Okay, so we can actually add additional stuff to this. So it gets sent in the tile data as a reference and we can just go tile data and let's change the color equal to our color. And for this to actually work, we also need to set something, uh, the flags, whoops, equals uh, lock color. That's just a little niggly thing that you need to know when changing a, 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 the color of a tile of, of tiles in script. Um, but I'll show you now that that in fact does work. So on our grass rule tile right now, it's set to transparent. So let's originally it's set to white, as you know, but now we can change it to these kind of things. Okay. And you can also do a lot of handy things with this. Like let's say you want and add a walkable Boolean. So now when you're traversing the map or you're doing like a turn-based game, you can now just show the tiles that are walkable for them to move to. Or you could say uh, like you could have an enum here, like um, enum tile type. And let's uh, serialize this so it can be shown. And then this could be like uh, grass or this could be water. Um, and then this could be like lava. So then you could have your public tile type here, type. And then depending on what they walk on, you could grab the tile type and then you could, uh, you know, add fire damage to them or uh, drown them or, you know, whatever you want to do. So then that will now show up here. Okay. And you can, this is our grass rule tile, but using the same script, you can now create another one. And this can be the water rule tile. And now you can have um, a whole set of water rules um, for your water tiles now. So your water tiles might be like a little bit inlaid here to make it look like it's got a little bit of depth. Um, and then if even, even at the bottom here, your bottom water tiles could actually be like a waterfall and it could be animated and it could be going off the side of your map. You know, whatever you want to do. Anyway, that's what I wanted to show you. So back into the original video. Goodbye. So as you can see, it's quite powerful and you can build maps very, very quickly using this system. Uh, obviously, if I just start drawing here, it's going to look disgusting because I've only got three rules here. And you do, in fact, need uh, all of these 15 tiles with 15 rules uh, to cover every single edge case. Uh, you'll probably start doing this and you'll get to like seven rules and you'll be like, oh, I think I've tricked the system. You know, I think I've got this uh, really complex rule set that that covers every single edge case, but you'll soon find out that uh, no, you've missed something. I have certainly been there like a few times. Um, you need all of these 15 tiles. And uh, just for your convenience, I, I drew these this morning, but I will uh, attach these in the description in case you want to go through and try to set up your system yourself. And then afterwards you can, you know, replace them with your own tile sets. Uh, so I hope you learned something. I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, if it was, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. I'm going to be releasing uh, a video every single week. So stay tuned for that and I will see you next time.